Today we're going to talk about types and sources of variation. And the goal of this video is to define variation, explain why variation is important, and describe how variation arises through mutations and sexual reproduction, specifically the process of meiosis. So first, what is variation? Variation refers to diversity in phenotypes, which would be physical characteristics, or genotypes, which would be the combination of alleles that are within a species. Now, variation is important because it allows organisms to survive in a changing environment. And to illustrate this, I've put this image of giraffes on the slide. So suppose there is variation in the length of necks among a population of giraffes. And suppose that food can only be found in tall trees in their environment. The long-necked giraffes will be able to survive. Their necks are long enough that they can reach the food. But the short-necked giraffes will not survive. Their necks are too short, they can't reach the food, so they will starve and die. So in this, this example is a simple ex example to just illustrate the point that variation uh, will allow some organisms to survive uh, and others not. Now, there are different types of variation. Traits that show continuous variation are called quantitative traits, and traits that show discontinuous variation are called qualitative traits. So the two types of variation are continuous and discontinuous. So let's focus on continuous for a minute. By continuous, I mean that the trait can have a range of values on a spectrum. So for example, height. There is a range of heights that you can be. And <clears throat> these are referred to as quantitative traits um, because you can, you can put some value on them uh, that, that falls on that spectrum. And usually quantitative traits are determined by a large number of genes. So your height is not just controlled by like one gene or two genes. It's controlled by many genes. Now let's talk about discontinuous variation. So by discontinuous, I mean that the trait uh, falls into distinct categories. So it's not on a spectrum here. There's just specific, a few categories. And an example of this would be blood type. So there are only four blood types. There's type A, type B, type AB, and type O. And discontinuous uh, variation, we call these qualitative traits because um, here it's not that you assign a specific value on some spectrum to it, uh, where it's just in categories, you just assign a name to the category. And qualitative traits are usually determined by one or two genes, just a few genes. Okay, so let's finish by talking about sources of variation. Variation can arise from these three sources, mutations, sexual reproduction, and environmental factors. I'm going to briefly describe uh, each one of those sources of variation, but in the following videos, we'll unpack each one in more depth. So a change to the DNA would be an example of a mutation. And this change to the DNA can modify an existing gene. And in changing the gene, it actually can create a new allele. So the addition of that new allele, that's what adds variation to the population. Sexual reproduction rearranges or shuffles the genetic material into new combinations of alleles. So you'll recall in a previous video, that chromosomes have genes on them, 
And if you begin uh, exchanging parts of the uh, paternal chromosome with parts of the maternal chromosome, um, if you begin exchanging some of that material, then you can get new combinations of alleles. And that's what you're seeing in this image. These chromosomes, we'll talk more about this in a future video, but you see them overlapping and a part of one chromosome is now uh, on, on a different chromosome. That creates a new combination of alleles and that's where you get some variation from. And then this final uh, way that variation can arise is from environmental factors. So environmental factors can be both external to the organism and internal to it. An example of an external uh, environmental factor would be like the temperature or weather outside. And an, an example of an internal environmental factor would be uh, the production of certain hormones. These external and internal environmental factors, they influence the expression of the genotype. So in the first video in this unit, we looked at uh, ways that gene expression can be regulated or influenced, and in the presence of certain environmental factors can influence the expression of certain genes. So these are three ways that, vary, uh, that you can get variation in a population. You can get them from mutations, sexual reproduction that shuffles genetic material into new combinations, and environmental factors.